you know, viewers, well, I got me a more advanced AM transmitter recently. This is a Spitfire AM transmitter, solid state kit. Now, yeah, this seems a pretty good quality little station. It's a maximum output is only 100 milliwatts, which complies with FCC standards here as well. So, you can see integrated circuits. These are um, to do the what the main advantages of this one. It actually um, uh, automatically levels the volume in the base, so you can have the audio source plugged in, turn it up flat out, and it's will automatically correct the base and modulate the audio waveform and transmit it clearly, and it automatically um, yeah, for, uh, corrects it. Got forever green capacitors. So yeah, it's got a pretty good RF stage in it. And one of them does the antenna tuning. SWA and SWB, which, is, which are your, um, your frequency. So for UK frequency steps. US, you got all those there. It comes with these dip switches, which yeah, you can change. This shows you how to do it to the correct station you're um, tuning onto the band. Now it says about there between 100 and 1400. This area here is the best performance we'll get at the furthest range. So while the soldering iron's warming up, you know, quick look at these instructions. Pretty easy to build, step by step instructions are there, it's pretty easy to follow. It came with a power cord, which these aren't allowed to be sold in Australia. That's a typical European style 220 volt plug top. Not quite as good a quality as the Australian ones. That's the power supply, it's a 12 volt, 15 volt. 0.8 amp max when they're loading it. Switch mode, so hopefully this thing's going to filter that noise from that power supply. And it came with the input cord from the audio source and a 3 meter antenna. And that's the antenna tuning, uh, tuning capacitor, the trimmer capacitor. These are the crystals. And there's the uh, sockets and everything, it all comes with. So, pretty easy little kit. It's not quite as complicated as I thought it was. So, yeah. Have a look at the little structure. So it tells you the start of the um, 10 resistors, which is pretty easy. And then all the resistor numbers are actually numbered on the board, so it's pretty easy to follow. Just, yeah. Very nice little design, this kit. That's the bottom, that's the top. And that sits in the front. It's got an LED in it, so it tells you that it's on. And that slides in the back. So yeah, let's start building. So if you're also going to bend the component leads, nice and neat, that's what you would do. So for the resistor 2 I'll go, just if I can pick it up. So you get your pliers, there I've gone about a millimetre away from the body of the resistor. And carefully bend, like that. That way your resistors won't have any stress on them in the board. Do the same for this side, a millimetre away from the resistor body, and I'll bend it down the same way. Should have something like that, a nice bend. Not a very good camera to do this sort of thing, but it's not HD, but... Uploading and editing HD videos takes forever. So this resistor is resistor number 2, which is over here. Just above this number 1. So install that. And you'll see, as it goes in, it has no stress by the way I've bent it. And there you go. Bending the component leads, it's perfect. Looks professional and it sits in nicely. Now I could just solder it, and the less solder you use and there you work, the better. The less chance you can have um, bridges between traces and shorts and all that sort of thing. So I will solder that and sit those leads off and continue on. Simple. Another important tip ventilation is very important with soldering. This stuff is pretty bad for you. This is resin called solder. Um, uh, ordinary solder, not that lead free crap. And it's also important to keep your soldering iron clean, so it starts to clog up, wipe it on a wet sponge. A clean soldering iron is a good soldering iron, it will solder really, really well. So, yeah, I'm up to this step, number 11, so R24, which is a, they are. 
TK7, 25 watt, red, violet, red, gold. So yeah, but you can see the way I did it looks pretty professional. Except for that one, I had to refold really it because it was the first one I stuffed up. But yeah, as as I said before, the black looked like a violet. So do double check your color codes as stated in those steps when you're building kits like this. Especially um, with the resistors, you got to familiarise yourself with a colour code. Okay, if you're at step 14, it's an LK1 on the board, which is a zero ohm resistor, which is a link, so it's just a resistor with nothing but a black band in the middle of it. So that's what it looks like. Camera won't focus, but it's just a resistor with a black band on it, and that's it, nothing else. So this goes there, LK1. In other words, LK1, LK stands for link. Okay, there was CD4046, CMOS phase lock loop, PWL. That's the component there. And that's the way it faces on the board. You've got a little the U shape. That's indicated on the board there, which is facing up. So that's the correct way to install it. So we'll solder that. Now these are the tricky bits. You've got to be very careful in soldering things like this, not to short them out. One more tip. When you're putting these ICs in, then I prefer to have what I supplied some IC sockets. Then plug these in after you solder. But it didn't come with that, so what I did, I installed one side of the um, IC in. I got a flat edge, so a flat edge of this knife and pushed every pin into the hole, guided it through so I wouldn't bend any of the pins out of the back. So yeah, that one's in and ready to be soldered. Okay, if yours, one thing I learned today. The dot on the board, there's a dot there for on, so that's the polarity indicator on these. It tells you which way it's on, so it's telling you to mount these this way for a reason. So the polarity of the switch is right. So on means on, not on, it's off and off, on, otherwise yeah, it'd be a bit confusing. But it's coming along quite nicely. Not much stuff to go now. Okay, if yours, one tip in rolling these, and soldering these, it doesn't tell you. When you're doing mechanical connections like this, ensure you put a lot of solder. If it's a big hole, there's a small amount of room taken with a lead here. You got a lot of surface area to fill, so make sure you fill the whole lot up with solder, like here, for the best possible mechanical connection. Same with here. That way, it's um, a good mechanical strength. You're not going to worry about um, breaking it and having a bad solder connection with um, mechanical force as you use this. So yeah. Okay, the other kit is now fully assembled. I've got the 9 kilohertz here. There's a 10 kilohertz quartz crystal I've got, so my tuning may be a little different. So I'll install this. So that's going to go on. Perfect, my LED spacing was close to being right. And there we are. That's it. And I'm going to screw everything down, find the mounting holes, and yeah, it should be all complete. It's actually um, not for Australia, it's for the US. We use this one, 9 kilohertz steps. Because you look how the radio tunes here in Australia, how we've got our um, dial set up, goes by 9s. Yeah, step, steps in 9, 9, 9, 9, so that's the Australian one. So 1440 is the default, what it's preset to, so I'll leave it on that station. This is the one I've got to use for our alarm for Australia. That's for the American one, which skips 10 by 10 by 10 as a tune. So, yeah, I've got to swap these out and put the right one in, and then it'll be done. Then I can test it. Yeah, well, let's put this in together. Give it a test. I've got the right one for the right frequency column for Australia. So that's the right crystal. There's the American one we don't need for this particular list for Australia. So that's very simple. What do you do? I think this goes on one way, this little box. It's got like a male um, clip on one side and a re female recess on the other. This only goes one way, so.
and screws will be hard at first because the um, plastic hasn't been tapped into the threads yet so you got to do it with these screws for the first time which will be a bit hard. Alright, our 3 metre FCC compliant antenna. Our um, source, doesn't matter which gear these go. This for stereo, just um, mixes both the channels together. Alright, that goes into the DC, the which goes in the back, so that goes here. Just like that. Then I get the Australian cord, because that's not going to work here. I get the Aussie cord for that and we'll power it up and give it a test. Okay, viewers, this power supply is very noisy. I put the radio next to it and I get all sorts of bloody interference. Bloody switch made power supplies. The reading on with this, it tells me how to tune it. To do all these switches, I've got to find what does what. Got to go by the pulse of the LED. So I keep reading. The transmission will be achieved when the magic eye is gently pulsating. Well, it looks like it's going kind of mad here. If the LED is very bright and ultra, the aerial tuning settings will reduce the audio level. Keep on, um, okay. For short range around the house, you can leave the ATU set to default. So they have to be all on for that to work. So that's it, that's set. They're all on. They should all be off. Well, it works, just thought I'd do a tuning, getting it fine tuned now. Gotta find exactly where it is on the dial. This is a god arm, the actual settings will vary depending on how the aerial is positioned. So how I position that and what type of aerial I use. So if I use a something like this not designed for an AM transmitter, I've got to retune this every time I change the aerial, so it is working. Um so it tells here if I'm using an external one. Between 450 and 1800. On, 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 all switches. That's it. The goal is to find the best ATU switch setting that gives it resonance with the lowest value ATU trimmer setting. Some experimentation will find the best combination. Basically, what it's telling you, you got to just experiment until you get the best possible um, reception on your radio. So, yeah. I'll give this a good tuning over and see how it goes. Okay, the yours is the best I can get it to sound so far. It's not like the nightmare switching these around getting which one of these so it sounds the best. Then you gotta ground it, which I've done, I've got a ground. That made us plugged in, so that's all grounded. Maximum range is there, so. Set that over there. Better. We gotta switch these around to get the audio to sound right. So we'll switch this one here off. It's a bit better. Yeah, you gotta play around with these switches, man, this one. Yeah, see how it works. Yeah, a bit hard to operate the switches, so you need two hands, but yeah. 
turn out to your match. Distorts a little bit. Now this little thing here is supposed to tell you that it's a modulator, you gotta look at that as you're doing it. Best transition will be achieved when the magic eye is gently pulsating. If the LED is very bright, try altering the aerial tuning settings or reducing the audio level. So turn your audio down. Nothing. There you go. If it's so fast, so might have another video on this, just turning it up. Once I've tuned it up, I'll show you the reception range on this. So, yeah. For now, thanks for watching.